أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم يأتكم نبأ الذين من قبلكم قوم نوح وعاد وثمود والذين من بعدهم لا يعلمهم إلا الله جاءتهم رسلهم بالبينات فردوا ويديهم في أخواههم وقالوا إنا كفرنا بما أرسلتم به وإنا لفي شك مما تدعوننا إليه مريب قالت رسلهم أفي الله شك فاتني السماوات والأرض يدعوكم ليغفر لكم من ظلومكم ويؤخركم ويؤخركم إلى أجل مسمى قالوا إن أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا تريدون أن تصدون عما كان يعبد آباؤنا آباؤنا فأتونا بسلطان مبين قالت لهم رسلهم إن نحن إلا بشر مثلكم ولكن الله يمن على من يشاء من عباده وما كان لنا أن نأتيكم بسلطان إلا بإذن الله وعلى الله فليتوكل المؤمنون وما لنا أن لا نتوكل على الله وقد هدانا سبلنا ولنصبرن على ما آذيتمونا وعلى الله فليتوكل المتوكلون وقال الذين كفروا لرسلهم لنخرجنكم من أرضنا من أرضنا أو ندعودن في ملتنا فأوحى إليهم ربهم لنهلكن الظالمين ولنسكننكم الأرض من بعدهم ذلك لمن خاف مقامي وخاف وعيد واستفتحوا وخاب كل جبال عنيد من ورائه جهنم ويسقى من ماء صديد يتجرعه ولا يكاد يسيغه ويأتيه الموت ويأتيه الموت من كل مكان وما هو بميت ومن ورائه عذاب غليظ صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم الله عز وجل in verse 9 of Surah Ibrahim mentions <coughs> first of all these verses that I'm going to briefly commentate on is where Allah عز وجل is consoling the believers that whenever the prophets of the time and the believers went out to tabligh and convey the message of Allah Azza wa Jal, there have always been oppositions. There have always been people who opposed the truth, opposed the haq, never ready to accept. Even though the prophets of the time by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal show them many miracles and signs so that they will realize and accept that this is the Nabi of Allah Azza wa Jal and the Kalam of Allah is the true Kalam and the true words but instead of actually accepting they were stubborn they rejected and not only that but they tortured and persecuted the mu'mineen and the believers and even the prophets of the time so Allah Azza wa Jal mentions here that it's nothing new that if you go through those same situations, same circumstances, where people are being persecuted for the truth, tortured for the truth, for the haq, it's nothing new. It's nothing new. But in order to gain the help of Allah Azza wa Jal, the most important thing is, as mentioned in another verse of the Quran Kareem, وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا لَا يَضُرُّكُمْ كَيْدُهُمْ شَيْئًا that if you are patient, you do sabr, and you implement taqwa. Meaning, your life should be completely empty of sin, void of sin. Your life should be full of the fear of Allah, 
taqwa, God conscious. You are completely fulfilling all the commands of Allah. You are a very faithful believer. Then Allah's help will come. Then nothing will harm you. You will be calm. And you will understand the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Ta'ala makes a mention here. Of various prophets and the nations and the people. Alam yatikum naba'ul ladheena min qablikum. Have the incidents of those before you not come to you. Incidents of whom? Allah further on mentions. Qawmi Nuhim wa Adim wa Thamud. The incidents of the nation of Nuh, the Ad and Thamud. Walladheena min ba'dihim. And those after them. لا يعلمهم إلا الله Only Allah knows them. جاءتهم رسولهم بالبينات Their messengers came to them with clear signs. Clear signs. فردوا أيديهم في أفواههم But they placed their hands in their mouths and said وقالوا إنا كفرنا بما أرسلتم به Verily we do not believe in what you have been sent with. وَإِنَّا لَفِي شَكِّمْ مِمَّا تَدْعُونَ لَا إِلَيْهِ مُرِيبٍ We are in such a doubt regarding that towards which you call us, that is a cast us into uncertainty. Their messenger said, قَالَ ذَا رُسُلُمْ أَفِي اللَّهِ شَكٌّ فَاطِرِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Are you in doubt regarding Allah, who is the creator of the heavens and the earth? لِيَغْفِرَ لَكُمْ مِنْ ذُنُوبِكُمْ وَيُوَخِرَكُمْ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّةٍ He calls you, to forgive your sins and to grant you respite until the appointed term. Qalu. They said, In antum illa basharun mithluna. You are but mere humans like ourselves. So basically, when the messengers and the prophets were giving the message and conveying the message of Allah Azza wa Jal, they said, How am I going to accept you? You're a human being like me. You're a human being like me. We don't accept human beings. With this sort of type of message, if you're an angel, a farishta, or someone else, uh, or some other being, some other species, not human beings like me, like us, then you'll probably accept it. So that's why they mention this. And many uh, people have this sort of objection that you are like human beings. We're not ready to accept. I mean, bring another species, uh, something out of the extraordinary. Uh, how can it be that Allah chose you? We all one. One jinns, one being. And then they would say that one, uh, another reason why they're not ready to accept You intend to forbid us from what our forefathers used to worship. Our forefathers used to worship idols, statues, their ways, the pagans. How can we leave that, what our forefathers were doing, and accept you? And accept your method of worship? No way, no way. For them it's like a big sin. Going away from the ways of the forefathers, like a big sin. So no way, how can we know that? So then, فَأْتُونَا بِسُلْطَانِ mubin. So produce a clear proof. We want a clear proof. Allah Akbar. قَالَتْ لَهُمْ رُسُلُهُمْ The messengers told them, إِنْ نَحْنُ إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ we are but mere humans like yourselves. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَمُنُّ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ But Allah favors whomsoever He wills from His bondsmen. Allah, regarding prophethood and nubuwat, one does not attain the status of nubuwat due to piety and taqwa. That is something which Allah chooses. Whomever Allah chooses for, to be a nabi, they get to be a nabi. That's it mentions there. There's so many pious pious servants of Allah right from the time of Hazrat Adam والسلام, right up to now. But being a prophet, that is only from Allah Azza wa Jalla. He chooses whoever he wishes. And regarding proofs, more miracles you're asking for, the messengers would reply by saying. وَمَا كَانَ لَنَا أَن نَأْتِيَكُمْ بِسُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ We are unable to produce a proof for you without Allah's order. Allah gives us a command, then 
we may be able to carry out the miracle. Otherwise, we cannot. If you want to believe, you believe. But Allah Ta'ala goes according to His timetable, not because according to your timetable. <laughs> this is a very important part of Aqidah. Allah has His own timetable. Allah Ta'ala wants to punish someone that's according to His timetable. It could be now, it could be later, it could be 10 years after, it could be 20 years after. Allah doesn't go according to how we wish. Allah does how He wishes Himself. Allah does whatever He wishes, whenever He wishes. So if you're asking for a proof now, the Anbiya will always say, sorry, no, not now. Bhai. We cannot say. When Allah says we can do, it's not in our hands. The miracle we've shown you up to now as well, that is all because by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not in our hands. Those miracles can only be carried out if Allah gives us a command. So basically, it's no big deal on our part. It is all from Allah Azza wa Jal. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Only on Allah should the believers rely. Ha. In every walk of life, everything we do, should always have trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. Always. And Allah is mentioning here regarding believers. Believers. Not just normal people here. You need believers rely on Allah. They should only rely on Allah. We do what we can, then we rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Problem with us, our level of tawakkul is so, so low that even the easy task we can't even accomplish. And these pious people, the Sahaba, you're probably amazed now even when you listen to the incidents. How did they do this? How did they do this? How did they achieve this? Because their tawakkul on Allah was so high, something which was impossible was made possible. And we're always crying every day. Oh, we got no money. I've got done this. I can't do this. I can't. Allah. Yes, we make the necessary effort. And that's the of the dunya. But at the same time, tawakkul <coughs> Allah. If that was the case, then the first battle of Badr. Eh? Allah. The first battle. Muslim 313. Eh? The kuffar 1000. They hardly had any weapons, nothing. Now if someone wants to look at that way, how could they succeed? Is, their tawakkul on Allah, their taqwa, their piety, their obediency, so their loyalty to Allah, and that's when Allah's rahmat comes. We are all in need of Allah's rahmat, and to attract Allah's rahmat, Allah's rahmat, piety is very important. Taqwa and righteousness is very important. That also brings about the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does. You know, Sometimes we look by, is this some azab of Allah? To get away, a protect us from the azab of Allah is to change our lives into pious lives. Hayatun tayyibah. That will attract the mercy and the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah's mercy does not come just like that. We have to really be pious and righteous. That's why in the verse Allah mentions, in the rahmat Allahi qareebun min al-muhsineen. Allah's rahmat is qareeb with the muhsineen. Are we among the muhsineen? Or are we among the uh, the Fasiqeen. Ah. When there's Fasiqeen, it does not attract the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That attracts the punishment, the azab in many different different forms. Either in the form of humiliation, disgrace, loss of lives, loss of wealth, anything. Hmm. And then, the messages of the time will also and the beliefs of the time will give a reason why should they why they put their trust on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why they relied upon Allah azza wa they give the reason for that as well why should we not rely on Allah when he has guided us to the, his path he has guided us to the right path he has guided us towards sirat al-mustaqeem for us giving the tawfiq of Iman and Islam, that is the right path. To be able to carry out all the amals and deeds that is the right path. Then why should we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He's brought us up to here. And due to his mercy and rahmat and tawfiq. Allahu Akbar. So in conveying the message of Allah, whatever difficulties we will go through, they mention here that we will be patient. We will do sabr. And we will maintain our relationship with Allah azza wa jal. We shall definitely exercise patience on the difficulties that you cause us. 
Only in Allah should those who have trust place their trust. It is learned from this that those who propagate the truth should expect opposition and difficulties from people. Always remember, it's a sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right from the time of Hazrat Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. That those who propagate and convey the true message, the truth, you will expect opposition and difficulties. If you don't get any opposition, that means you're doing something wrong. <laughs> that means you're doing something wrong. You're in the comfort zone. I'm not going to say anything to harm anyone. I'm going to say anything. I'm just keep myself in myself. It's fine. But that's not proper. That's not, that's not kurbani. Uh, we're getting, we like those people. Oh, he's a very good person. He keeps himself to himself. Pray namaz, go home. He, he doesn't hurt anyone. Uh, he don't speak the truth. <laughs> you get no opposition. And then, uh, but that person who starts speaking up, uh, I, uh, he's public enemy number one. And then, uh, he's public enemy number one. Then slowly gets opposition. But remember, when it comes to deen and haq, is haq as a deen. When it comes to propagation, that's true. And it's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This opposition is all from Allah. Allah wants to see how strong you are in your, in, in your conviction towards the truth. Or as soon as anything this happens, you just hide away and run away after. We're only there for the glory days. When the glory days are gone, then we go back. But these, these times that come, it all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to test our iman, test our faith. Test our conviction on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And good days and bad days, that's part of life. Good days and bad days, part of life. These are days we keep on telling among the people. Sometimes they have the upper hand, sometimes we have the upper hand. That's life. But as a Muslim, our vision, it should not be just up to the end of this life, it's the hereafter as well. Ha. That's why it's all about Allah, 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 Allah. What does it mean? Meaning we are all going to return to Allah. <laughs> and we all have to answer to Allah. Whether we done good, whether we done bad. Whether we're going through difficult times in our lives. It's not hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is watching. And for every thorn that we get pricked with, there is ajr and sawab for that. As long as they suffer and we remain steadfast upon our deen and our full trust is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Life is short. <laughs> Further on, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا The disbelievers say, said to their messengers, the Rasulihim, لَنُخْرِجَنَّكُمْ مِنْ أَرْضِنَا We shall certainly exile you from our land. أَوْ لَتَعُودُنَّ فِي مِلَّتِنَا Otherwise you should return to our deen, our religion, our way of life, our way of thinking. فَأَوْحَا إِلَيْهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ the Rabb sent revelation to them, we shall surely destroy the oppressors. And we shall definitely settle you in the land after them. This is for him who fears standing before me and who fears my warning. They sought a decision. وَحَابَ كُلُّ جَبَّارٍ عَنِيدٍ And every obstinate tyrant was unsuccessful. Throughout history, those who were the zalim, the tyrants, the oppressors, they have never been successful. Never been successful. And it's been mentioned in the Qur'an Kareem regarding Fir'aun and many other big tyrants. How Allah gave them so much power. But they abused that power. In oppression, in cruelty. Did they last for long? They also did. They also departed. So take solace and comfort from this that it doesn't last forever and ever and ever because they're not going to last forever and ever and ever. They will leave the dunya. And we shall leave the dunya. Mim wara'ihi jahannam. Before him is jahannam. So he, Allah Ta'ala talk about all these oppressors but he doesn't Mentioned here specifically here about any azab and punishment in the dunya. What is Allah saying? I mean, warahi jahannam. Before him is jahannam. So basically, Allah is telling us, don't worry if they don't get any punishment in the dunya. By there is the akhirah, there is the whole hereafter. There's qiyamah, there's hisab, there's kitab. 
the day of Qiyamah itself is going to be such a big punishment. Knowing that now everything is going to be out in the open. All the zulm and the oppression and the cruelty that I have done is going to be out in the open. But it will be so terrifying that people will want the day of Qiyamah to end and quickly just send us. Whether it's Jannah or Jannah, send us. That will be frightening itself. Khair. Allah Ta'ala is saying here, before him is Jahannam, وَيُسْقَى مِنْ مَاءٍ صَدِيدٍ And he will be given pus as a drink. Allah Akbar. In Urdu they call it peep. The white stuff that comes out, they'll be given that as a drink. So Allah then talks about the punishment of these tyrants, oppressors, who arrogantly rejected the call of truth. Yatajarrahu, he would drink it in sips, not just quickly drink it and then finish it off. You know, when you have a very um, a sour or bitter medicine, you quickly drink it, then you then wash it up with water. So we can't bear to drink. They'll be given a sip, 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 sip. So they keep on tasting it, keep on tasting it. You won't go quickly. Allah Akbar. The words used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yatajarra'ahu. Really? Ha. He would drink it in sips. And look amazing. And Allah mentions here. Wala yakadu yusiru. And it will not go down his throat. He will not go down his throat. Kichalu kissa khatam. It's gone down the throat. It's all ended. No. Allah. That. Jeeva gharib. That's just one type of punishment Allah is mentioning here. A person is going to be in hell forever and ever and ever. How good? Wala yakadu yusiyuhu, and it will not go down his throat. Wa yatihi al mautu min kulli makanin. Allah, death will come to him from all sides. Wa ma huwa bi mayit, but he will not die. In normal circumstances, someone who drinks this, they'll die. The punishment that they'll go through in normal circumstances in the dunya, they'll die in kaput and end. But in the akhir, in the hereafter, there's no death. So basically, يَذُوقَ uh, azab. They'll keep on tasting the punishment. They'll keep on tasting the punishment. It won't end, there's no end. <laughs> He'll be hoping for death, but there's no death. Death only happens between this life and the alam barzakh that's it. That is only that one second or two minutes, two seconds of that transaction from this world, to the alam e barzakh when we die and our soul is taken that is only taste that is only death that's all I'm using the words kullu nafsin za'iqatul maut za'i only taste it that's it <laughs> it's a state after that hoge khatam after that no death to come after that only for that one second it's not a long period then it comes to alam e barzakh when the ruh is somewhere else the body is there and then it's connected the ruh is connected to the body just like when you have a phone call, you're connecting. Is this connection? And see, that's what happens. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Death will come to him from all sides, but he will not die. وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِ عَذَابٌ غَلِيذٌ Before him will be severe punishment. Severe punishment. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala in these verses is giving us all a warning. That... We are going to depart from this world. Akhirat is haq, qiyamat is haq, jannat is haq, and jahannam is haq. The Quran is a book of guidance. So let's live our lives in such a manner that we are protected from jahannam and the azab of jahannam. Allah grant us entry into jannah and paradise. And may He be pleased with us. Subhanallah, bihamdihi, subhanakallah, wa bihamdihi. Thank mm-hmm. you.